Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video and that is for fall leaves. I've picked a few out of my yard, I'll show you in just a second and um, then we'll get started. I'm not sure if this is going to be Tiny Tuesday tutorial or if this is going to be journaling tutorial. I think I'm going to make it a journal tutorial and then I'll do a different one for Tiny Tuesday because sometimes these videos get a little bit too big to do tiny, so if you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, I think I'm giving up on doing Inktober, you guys. I've been feeling really guilty over it, but I really don't have a desire to do it. And if I don't have a desire to do it, I haven't had any time to paint. And so what I want to do is paint, not ink and draw all the time. I mean, I have to draw to paint, but you know what I mean, don't you? I don't know. But anyway, don't kill me. I did it three years in a row and I need a break. So um, anyway, also my little butterfly that I had zooming around here for two weeks, I finally caught him today and I set him free outside, but it's only 48 degrees. So I got a feeling he's gonna, he's either gonna go dormant or whatever. I don't know what happens to him or if they just die. It was a Frigga fritillary butterfly. They're not very pretty. They're just little brown butterflies, but he was big. So I let him go. But let me show you the friends I met along the way. Quiet, there are deer out here outside my studio. Diesel, could you quit barking? Diesel, stop it! They're hard to see in the woods. They blend in. That's enough. Be quiet. There's one right in the center. I don't know if you can see. There they go. There's three. One, two. There's one hiding behind that tree. I was just getting ready to do a painting. Oh, he was eating off of one of the branches. She, I mean. Looks like they're all... If you wouldn't bark so much, they'd stick around. And then you could watch them. I know you don't want them in your yard. It's hunting season and they're trying to find a place to hide out. I'd rather they hide in our yard. Yeah. Okay, so I have a plethora of different leaves here. I have a very large oak leaf. I get my oak leaves mixed up. There's several different types of oak trees on my property. This is one of them. I believe this is a white oak. Then I have a maple tree, sugar maple, right outside. And I got three of those leaves. And then I have this leaf, which is from a poplar tree. And then I have this from the bushes that we have that are low to the ground. So I thought, well, I got a few options here and I think I'll go ahead and I'm gonna draw them in my sketchbook. I'm gonna probably do one of these. I might do some branches coming in, maybe an oak leaf and a couple of maple leaves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw them on and then we'll go ahead and get started. The branches, I'm just going to fudge it and fiddle around, just get an idea of what these sticks look like, how they make their bends, and then put my leaves in too. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here.
some of you have asked, and I don't always take these um, these little wells out of my palette. I do a lot for my videos just because it's easy and I can make sure that I'm sticking within that palette and not going too far past the limitations I want for colors. Just to keep it simple for those who are beginners. Quinacridone Gold is an awesome color for fall. Um, it's just, it's one of those perfect colors, you know. I really like it. Put some yellow over here. It's a little brighter for this um, poplar leaf and the oak leaf. My permanent alizarin crimson, I'm gonna just stick over here. And I might even take a little bit of burnt sienna. Diesel, you gotta go lay down, okay? Or no, I use that gold fake brown, that's right. I can use that. Okay, now, no, oh, how'd I get that underneath there? Don't want that on my birdie. There we go. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start with my branches. Actually, I need something for that color, don't I? can use the gothite brown, but it's not dark enough. So I could use green and red, or I might just take some um, transparent oxide brown. Actually, no, I'm gonna use some of my hematite burnt scarlet. I like that color for branches. It's really kind of nice. So it's got a little bit of red in it. These really should be constituted first. It helps. I'm just gonna let it sit for a bit. Put some water in there and let it sit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my brush here. I wanna um, look at my veining too and see on these veins. It looks like these veins are, some of them are the same color or they're darker, like a green, some are red. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about the veining going in on these until I'm done. This is one way to do it. Um, so I'm going to grab myself some of this red. But before I want, before I start, I want to wet my wet my leaves because that way I can mix my. How did I get red? Oh, my had red on my cloth that I was wiping on. Okay, so I got this, this leaf done. And I like to mix, like I said before, I like to mix on my paper. So I'm just grabbing some color, a little bit of green. Shoot, that got a little too wet. And although my leaf is not green, I can take the red and drop it in there and some of it will become kind of a brownish color Now you can see how that green pushed the yellow away and it's pushing the red away. It seems to dominate on this. It's just fun though playing with these and seeing what kind of colors you get. And they don't have to be exactly like the leaf on your paper. These are just reference. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna go on with another one. Um, get this one wet. Got a drip of water on there I'll have to watch out for later because it's probably outside my lines. Okay, 
Now this one again, I'm gonna have some red, but this time I'm gonna take some green and I'm gonna try to paint some veining in ahead of time. And it's gonna spread a little bit because my leaf is wet, but I just wanna get the look of the veins in there. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit, not a lot, and then I'm gonna go back in with my red. Now I'm gonna go on to another one. I went into my green so that I can make a brown. Now while that is still kind of damp, but not wet, I'm gonna take my sap green. I'm just gonna kind of put some veins in here real faintly. I'm gonna go over this again with red, so you'll see that. See, it's kind of turning brown, which is what's happening on the leaf itself when I look at these leaves here. It's kind of green and it turns brown. Okay. Now I'm darkening over those veins. And because sap green stains, and I don't mind these veins turning brown because it's kind of how they appear on the leaf anyway. There were areas that were green. I can go back in with the green over the red to green it up if I want to. But I was able to put the veining in like that and I don't have any problem with it showing you know what I mean okay so now I'm gonna go on and do some of the stick portion here Oh shoot, I felt that happen. Me and my leftiness, you know. I should be working left to right. No, no, I'm right, right to left. But I went back and went to the right of that, which I should never do. And I'm so careful about that when I'm doing a painting, but when I'm just doing a sketchbook or a video, my brain falls out. Diesel, we're not going in. You're just gonna have to stay here. Sorry, you guys. He gets very whiny and needy. He does not like me being out here after 5 p.m. And right now, it is probably 525. 537. See, I can set a watch to him just about. He's not going to do anything in the house that he's not doing here. Lay on the couch, look out the windows. Now, if you have things like this on your paper, you can either add another leaf in there, which I might do, or at the end, put some splatters down. <laughs> that works too. The 
think I'll just put a leaf in. Got a couple things. I got a nail tool here, like a cuticle pusher with a straight edge, and I also have a fountain pen nib. And what you can do is just while it's still wet, scratch your. Now this is a really great way to do veining because you're scratching it in while it's wet. If you wait too long and it gets dry, then you're going to be scratching in white veins, which sometime you might need. Now here I'm going to add a little bit of watercolor to my nib, but see now it's trying to end up white. Hmm. This one probably won't work. I'm gonna try just getting it wet again, a little bit wetter. It could go deeper on the color, so I'm just gonna get this a little bit wet and wait a minute and then go back in. That's another way to do veining. Uh, use a sharp tool. You can use a piece of credit card, which is what I was looking for. I can't remember where I put it. Or any sharp object. This is sharp and flat on one edge. So I could take that and draw into this. And as long as it's wet enough, it's going to pull the color in and darken. When you get to the point where it's almost dry, you're going to get white lines underneath. See? This is too dry, so I'm not going to get anything. But if I go ahead and wet it again, put a little red on there. Maybe a little yellow, too. Keep that yellow in. Then I can go ahead in with my sharp tool. And I'll just go in like this. And all of that is going to sink into those lines. You can see it was a little dry there. It got a little bit white. I'm going on the edge because if I go flat down on this nib, you can see it splits open like a V. See? and I don't want two lines, so I'm using the side of it, basically, which works just fine. Yeah, these are all too dry now. Okay, so that's all I'm doing on those leaves. Now this one, this one had some brown dots on it. Might as well use this up on my brush may disappear because this is non-staining and it might lift off. I'm going to go up the veins first. You can do it after, you can do it before, but I'm just going to take my yellow and kind of go up these veins. There's so many different ways to do veining. Now on this, I don't want to do the scratch in because they're going to be red veins. And this definitely, the, the beauty of this leaf is that it's got these yellow, kind of greenish veins. I'm just doing the yellow. But having the yellow veining in there is just so pretty. This is kind of orangey, so I'm going to go in with both the orangey and the red here. There we go. Now, for the for the actual body of the leaf, I want this to be dry, or almost dry, and then you've got to paint around each and every one of those lines, and that is how that is done.
Boy, I gotta get my eyes checked. I can't see. I'm having trouble focusing. Ooh. I've got cataracts, you guys. I got it. Got them a few years ago. And it makes it really difficult to see sometimes. And I know I'm kind of young for cataracts, but because I have adrenal insufficiency and I have to take steroids as a stress hormone because I have no cortisol in my body, um, I have to take steroids. If you don't, then any kind of stress, physical or emotional stress, whether it be a cold or an argument, something that upsets you, grief, um, anything like that can send you your body into a tailspin and you release cortisol and you your body levels out on somebody who doesn't have it we've got to take fake cortisol which is basically hydrocortisone and having steroids in your body like that every day that are man-made and not your body's made destroys your eyes and causes cataracts one of the many side effects of steroids steroids are such a mixed bag they're so good and I tell you what when my asthma goes bad and I have to be on steroids in the fall because of my asthma it's kind of the best thing ever because then my pain is improved because it helps pain but you can't live on steroids because it'll destroy you so you have to find other ways to handle the pain. <laughs> so there's always like robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know what I mean? Oh, and whoever said that, I can't remember your name right off the top of my head, but that comment made me laugh about how your friend's boyfriend said, uh, kill two birds with one feather. <laughs> I suppose if you plucked them down to one feather, yeah, that would kill them. But that was kind of funny the way when you said that. I just laughed. I still need to go look that up. Maybe I will look it up and insert it in my editing here to let you know exactly where that came from, that saying. And for those of you watching this video but you didn't watch my last one, we were talking about it in my last one. Or I was talking about it. I wish you guys could chat with me here. It would be so nice to have somebody to talk to. You know, after my studio was done, I was supposed to start teaching classes here and all of that, and I was I was pretty excited about it. I've always loved teaching, and um, in nursing I used to teach a lot. I did job training, um, orientations, lectures. One of my lectures was six and a half hours long and it was the most boring tedious thing I used to put people to sleep all the time I felt so bad for them I'd be sleeping too it was the most dry boring crap but you have to learn it so you know but anyway I like teaching and then COVID hits after I get the studio it was like a month after I moved in maybe five weeks and COVID hit and we went on lockdown, so I never got a chance to do any classes last winter. But this winter's coming, so hopefully I can. We've been on such a tight lockdown here in Michigan, too. So many rules set by our governor. I mean, so many. Is that a, that is a line, isn't it? Did I put that there? Yeah, I did put that there. Um, and we're still, we're still in lockdown, you know, it's like, can't do anything. But today we went to a restaurant. My, my brother came to visit and we did, went to a restaurant and it was so nice to go out to eat. I walked in and nobody had masks on. I said, do we have to wear a mask? She's like, oh no, not unless you want to. So I took it off. There were customers on one side. We were on the other side, just one family and us in the restaurant and then the two owners so it wasn't bad at all so glad they just reopened yesterday I think two days ago so anyway you can see how this this is shaping up 
and I'm gonna probably tone this yellow down. I should have used gold rather than yellow, but I wanna tone it down a little bit more so I may go over it again with some washed, washed out, because this is almost orange in comparison to the yellow here. So I might just go ahead with a larger brush <coughs> and some diluted alizarin and just kind of go over this. Yeah, I like that. And that tones it down. See how it's toning it down? But you can still see the veining, but it doesn't look so in your face. It's a little too much, but I can wash it back. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Now once those are dry, I can put some shadows on. Putting shadows behind your leaves helps a lot too because um, you give it a landing point. They're not just floating in midair. Although branches can do that, um, you've given it a landing point there and it really helps to have that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this oak leaf first because I don't want to set my hand in this wet. And I'll show you how we're going to do all of the dots on here. Just taking this yellow. I'm going to mix it a little bit with the quinacridone gold and just kind of go back and forth with the color so that it's more than one color. It adds interest. You can change the value of one single color or you can um, just add a different color in and change it that way. You got one yellow, you got another yellow, you can add a cooler yellow. Mostly though in the fall, the colors are warmer. I'm gonna go in a little bit with some of my Gothite Brown, just a little bit to change that. It's got a very yellow color, almost yellow ochre-ish color, but it's not quite and it's semi-transparent, so I don't want to get it too heavy, but I just want to put some some of the staining in where these, these speckles have kind of caused like rotting in the leaf, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to kind of mess it around here and there. It's on the edges of the leaf all around. And it's got to be, where is it? Go tape around, there it is. <laughs> um, it's got to be dark enough that it's going to stick. The yellow is drawing it up, so I'm just going to go over it a couple times here. There. That's good enough. Maybe not. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of let that dry a bit. Um, actually, I do want to fix this edge, though. I kind of hustled on that and went out of my lines. There. Okay. And then I'm going to move on to this one. We'll come back to that one. Now, see how that toned down in here? It makes it look much better now. I should have put more veining in here, but I didn't. Now on this one, we got a lot of black, but we've got that same brown going on. And it looks darker there, but that's the leaf underneath. So just take my yellow. This Harbin Kalinske does not hold its shape as well as my, um, my uh, other Maestro Kalinskis. This one is a legend. This one is by Cheap Joe's. That's a good brush too, but it holds its point much better. Put some speckles. Actually, I should probably be using the Hematite Burnt Scarlet. It would work better because these get too faded. 
It's just the way it reacts. The pigment reacts with the yellow. So I'm going to go in with this hematite burnt scarlet and it's going to leave a lot darker. See, it doesn't spread out like the gothite does. I need some thicker paint here to go in and drop in some more colors. I've got a little bit of a bloom here and I'm going to cover that by putting more dots in and it won't show as much. Cover If you have mistakes, just cover them up. Need some in the middle here too. Okay. Now that is done, and I need to put in my um, veining. So I'm taking a rigger, and I'm going to go in with some very pale green. It seemed like there was a little bit of green. Oh no, that was on this. Never mind. This one, I should have gone around it because it's kind of white. So what I'm going to do now in this case is I'm going to use my... Um, sharp tool and try to cut in the white. We'll see if it works. It may not work. And that is a little bit darker in some spots, but So I'm just going to take a little bit of this color if I can. And that didn't work either, but that's all right. I can see the veins. I don't know if you can see the veins or not, but I can see the veins are there. I might just take a little bit of color on my pen, try to pick it up, pick up the watercolor. I probably have to do it with a brush and then just add it to the well here. I don't know if you can see that there. Just added it to the well, and I'm going to carefully tip it over and let it drip off on my palette. And then I'm going to try and come over here and just put some, yeah, some lines in just here and there. And that's another way you can do veining. These dip pen pens are great. Um, you know, you, you may not think to use them. If, if it, well, if you're doing Inktober, you're probably thinking to use them. But um, they are really great for, for doing things like this. I need more. I always make sure I get the excess off so they don't, don't end up with a big blob on my leaf. part was wet there but that's okay you can just have fun with it you know it's funny my old studio when I lived in in Shelby um, I had this old chair and it squeaked so bad. It was really loud. Now I have this chair and it squeaks too. <laughs> and it's a new chair. What the heck? I have just a little bit of paint left on my brush and I'm just putting it on here and then just putting that in. Okay, so that one's pretty much done. Now I gotta go back to this one. This one had the green for the veining. 
and then the brown speckles all over. So the green came way down here, but I'm going to exaggerate it. Well, it does come up here. It's just thinner. I'm going to put some green on my pen and do it the same way. Let's see how it goes. See, there's so many different ways to do this. Painting around them is a very common way to do it. I like doing things like this, but it all, you can only do this if the, the veining on the leaf is going to be sh a different color or, you know what I mean? I don't know if that made sense. Some veins are lighter. And if they're lighter, then you've got to paint around those areas. Kind of like I did the yellow and then I went over it with a pale red after I painted the red in. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in all of the um, shadowing. And my shadowing, I'm just going to go ahead and use myself some uh, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. There's another one called Shadow Violet that I like. I have both, but I like Moon Glow is my favorite. Just adding a lot of water to this. I should just take my spray bottle and add a little bit in there so that it softens it up. Then, oh, which way am I going to have the light coming from? I'll just have it come down this way. I'm going to do it all on the left. But before I do that, I'm afraid I'm going to get my leaf ruined with my hand so I'm just gonna do this oh there was one other thing we needed to do too with that other leaf um, I got to put the speckles on so let me just finish this real quick I had to get the point back on my brush there I lost it there for a second I'm going down the left sides um, and the bottom sides. I want that a little bit wider and more dramatic. I'm leaving this part alone and then I'm coming in underneath on this side. And see how that plants the leaf down? Um, okay, now for the speckles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paper towel, cover all this up, and I'm just going to splatter paint. Um, let me take this paper towel also. Fold it in half here. And I'm going to hopefully splatter in the right areas without screwing it up. I'm going to take some of that hematite burnt scarlet. You can take a brown, whatever you got. And then I'm just going to tap, tap, tap away. Nope, I got over the edges. Darn. See, that's the hard part. It's getting over doing it without splattering spots you don't want to splatter. It's very hard to control. I'm trying to get up to the edge of this here. There I got it. But I did go over in a couple spots. Oh well. So I got a couple speckles that went over. That's all right. It's just my journal. I could clean them up probably. Yeah, they're cleaning up pretty well. 
as long as I get in there with my towel quick enough. There we go. It depends on the color you're using, whether or not you'd be able to do that. So if you use a non-staining color like I was. All of those are lifting. There we go. There, got rid of most of them. So that worked out well. Um, now back to the shadows. I'm leaving a little space in places here so it looks like the branch is lifting up off of the table. I can't show you that. My table is glass, but if you have a branch that's lifting up off the table, the shadows are going to separate. Now this one I can put planted down and then I can have this one come away from it again. It got a little too dark. Let me lighten that a bit. Just wetting my brush, drawing it down. There, that'll lighten it a bit. Now I'm a journaling. Need a pen. People often ask me, what is it that I write in my journal? They don't know what to write. I always start with the date. And you can make the date fancy. You can put it real small. Some people have a stamper and they stamp their date in. Uh, sometimes I do it real big like I am today and other days I don't do it that way. And then basically I just write something about the pictures that I have drawn or painted into my journal. So today was about the leaves. So I just said that I picked up these leaves on the back and front porch of my studio and that the leaves are changing, I think I said more slowly this year. Uh, I can't remember. That was yesterday when I did this. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but that there, there was been, there's been a lot of rain and et cetera. So that's basically what I wrote in my journal for the day and that I love fall. That's my favorite season of the year. So that's it today for my journaling and my fall leaf tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. And remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.